you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to answer this question on your own before listening on. Perhaps what we can do first is draw a picture of the scenario. So let's assume that the Explorer starts at this point right here and we've marked that start. The desired trajectory was to travel due north for 5.6 kilometers until he reached camp, but unfortunately he went off course because of the snowstorm. So he walked 50 degrees north of due east for a distance of 7.8 kilometers and arrived at this point right here. What we have to determine is how far and in what direction must he walk in order to get back to base camp. So leave a little question mark on this vector right here. Now what we can do is call the vector from when the explorer traveled from start all the way to this point right here, we can call that vector A. And then the vector that we're trying to figure out we can call vector B. And what we'll do is set up a table to keep this information organized. Now here is that table and what we have are vector A and B and then we have what is known as the resultant. The resultant would be the original trajectory that the explorer had set out to travel along. And if we look at that original trajectory, we can see that that vector has a y component equal to 5.6 kilometers. So in the table, we can fill in 5.6 in for the y component. We'll notice that the x component actually is zero because the desired trajectory was to walk exclusively in the y direction. The explorer did not want to walk anywhere in the x direction, so we can put zero in for that. Now, we look at vector A, and what we're going to do is break it into its x as well as its y components. And maybe to see what those components are, we can draw them in. So the x component would be pointing in this direction right here, and then the y component would be pointing straight up. And our goal is to use a little bit of trigonometry to find those two components. Now, we can see that the x component is adjacent to the 50 degree angle. And so we're going to use the cosine function to determine the magnitude of that x component. And so we can write that the x component is equal to the hypotenuse of 7.8 multiplied by the cosine of 50. The y component, which points straight upward, is opposite to the 50 degree angle, so we're going to use the sine function. So that can be labeled the hypotenuse multiplied by the sine of 50 degrees. We'll take that x and y component and we'll plug it into our table. And we'll notice that because the x component is pointing to the right, we're going to keep this a positive x component. And because the y component is pointing straight up, that too will be positive. What we are missing are the components for the vector that we had labeled b. But what we want to realize with this table is that the sum of these two components must equal the resultant x component. And similarly, the sum of these two components must equal the resultant y component. And so really all we have to do here is take the resultant x and subtract the x component of vector a. Now if we do that, we can see that we're going to end up with negative 7.8 cosine of 50. And then if we do the same thing in the y direction, we're going to end up with 5.6 minus 7.8 sine of 50. So indeed, these are the two components for vector b. So if we come back to the drawing, we can see that the x component is negative 7.8 cosine of 50. Now, a negative x component means that we would have to travel to the left. So we would have a component pointing in this direction right here, and the magnitude of that component is 7.8 cosine of 50. And then to complete the journey back to camp, we would have to walk straight down. And that component is the y component that we just determined. It's the 5.6 minus 7.8 sine of 50. Now why don't we pick up our calculators and actually compute 5.6 minus 7.8 sine of 50. And we should get about negative 0.375. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode when you do that. We can actually omit the negative sign right now because the vector is pointing straight down, and so that indicates the negative direction. What we want to do is just figure out this magnitude right here of vector b, and we've drawn a nice hearty right triangle. So we can use Pythagorean theorem to determine the magnitude of vector b.
And so we have the hypotenuse squared equals one of the legs squared plus the other leg squared. We'll pick up our calculators again and compute the right hand side. And we get about 25.3. And then we have to take the square root of both sides to solve for the magnitude of b. And we get about 5.0. And that would be measured in kilometers. So this is the correct answer to part a. And now part b, we need a direction. Well, we can define that direction by finding this angle right here. And if we study this triangle carefully, we can see that we can use the tangent function, which is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent. Now the opposite side would be the 0.375, and the adjacent is that 7.8 cosine of 50. Now to actually find the angle, what we have to do is take the inverse tangent of both sides of this equation. On the left side, the inverse tangent and the tangent will cancel, so we'll have the angle equaling the inverse tangent of that 0.375 divided by 7.8 cos 50, which is about 0 0.075. So when we take the inverse tangent of that, we get about 4.3 degrees. And then the way we want to word this is as follows. Notice that to the left would be the west direction, of course, based on our simple compass directions. The angle is actually measured in a sou southerly direction relative to west. So what you want to do is imagine that you're originally facing west, but then you have to sort of bend downward to trace out that angle. And so since we're moving south relative to the west direction, we could say 4.3 degrees south of west. And that would be the correct answer to part b, giving the direction of vector b. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and also subscribe so you can stay tuned for similar videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.